Hey everyone, this is Alex Iglesias, and today we're going to be discussing how what you can achieve when implementing a reverse proxy in Webflow. That's even sweet. Cool. So first, let's start with answering a very simple question, and it's what's a reverse proxy? And let me zoom in because this is okay. Cool. So what's a reverse proxy? You may have heard multiple times, okay, reverse proxy, reverse proxy, but what, what is that? So right now, um, usually when you visit a site, you have just a regular site, okay? This is just the client, let's call it. When we say the client, this means the browser, essentially. So this is a user in the browser, and that client tries to load a website. So this client makes a request to the server, which in this case, it's Webflow. Okay, and I'll put here, just so you have context, this is the browser, okay? And the client just makes a request to the server and the server responds back with a response, okay? So this is a request that's going there. Let's move this up. And the server, it's returning a response. In the case of a Webflow project, so this would be making first a request to the Webflow server and Webflow knows that the project has been published with the whatever setup you have in the, in the designer and Webflow returns a response with some HTML, okay? That HTML contains all the elements and then all the, all the links to the CSS files, the assets, everything. It's included in this response, okay? This is the regular Webflow. But what happens when we put a reverse proxy, reverse proxy, it's essentially the same, but in, oops, let me clone this super quick. Boom, like that, cool. But instead of just having client and browser, what happens is that before reaching the server, so before uh, this request arrives to Webflow, we'll put a, proxy here in the middle, okay? So this is what's called a reverse proxy. And this reverse proxy allows us to have full control of whatever it's returned to the client. This means that here in the reverse proxy, first of all, what's gonna happen is it's going to decide, for example, okay, the client is coming from this URL, then I can run my own logic, I can do whatever I want. Okay, and after doing whatever I want, because maybe I want to redirect the user, maybe I want to load a specific um, the URL from the server, I can do whatever. But when I run that logic, then the reverse proxy can make a request to Webflow, and then Webflow will not return directly to the client, but still will re return that request to reverse proxy. So here, again, we have some extra control, because after returning, after getting what's coming from Webflow, we still can mutate this response. We can do whatever we want with it. And then we can return it to the client. So it seems a little bit complicated, but now when, you, when I start explaining everything that you can do with it, I think it will make much more sense. So this is the, the basis of a reverse proxy. This is how it works. It's basically just this middleman that sits between the client and Webflow. And this is very important because as you may know, if you're a Webflow uh, a user, you may know that we don't have control over the Webflow server. The only control that we have in a Webflow project is what we design in the designer and then what we, we publish that and that's it. So Webflow takes care of everything else. We don't have any way of hooking into that and altering what's coming. Okay, what can we do with a reverse proxy? What can we build with a reverse proxy? So now I'm gonna give you a bunch of examples. This might not be everything, obviously. You can always be creative and implement many different things. But we can do things like multiple Webflow projects under a single domain. Uh, let's write this, multiple Webflow projects under a single domain. What does that mean? Okay, so I have the perfect example and it's that finsuite.com uses a reverse proxy. In our case, I can show you that if you go to finsuite.com, this is the finsuite.com site. Okay, this is a Webflow project. You can navigate here. You can go slash products, slash agency, everything. It's 
a Waffle project. But for example, if you go to fitzwin.com slash attributes, this is a completely different project. So this, if you see the designer, this is a whole different project, a whole different designer setup, okay? If you go to fitzwin.com slash client first, first, this is again another Waffle project. This is not the same one. Okay, but still, you can see it's under under the fintu.com domain. And I could be uh, going on and on because I think that we have like 30 different projects. So the fintu.com site, it's, it's, it's quite huge because it's not just one project. It's 30 different Waffle projects. This has a bunch of benefits. Okay, you can talk about SEO, uh, domain authority, because we have a lot of content on the fintu.com. You can talk about just uh, being able to create any kind of Routes, architecture, etc. So it's it's very powerful, and we'll see that this is exactly what we're gonna uh, we're gonna be setting up on the second stream. Okay, today we'll see a little bit how we can do this, but on the second stream we'll create is the same exact setup that we have in Fincy.com. So you can do the same of having multiple projects and serving them under a single domain. Okay, cool. So another thing, what we can do. What can we do? We can, for example, protect routes from the server. What does this mean? This is, so right now in Webflow, you don't have a secure way of protecting a page. Right now, if you have some information in Webflow that you don't want specific users to access it, you can't because everything is just published, everything is accessible. You could put a service in front of it, like member stack, for example, but that, that service is just JavaScript that goes in front, that, that, that loads on the page, but you can load the page without JavaScript and then everything is just unprotected. But in the cases of a REST proxy, if you remember, we have access to the request before this request hits Webflow server. So this means that when processing this request, we can decide if a user should proceed to the original target, or we can just send him or her to another place. So this is how we can protect routes from the server. And we'll see that today too. Okay, more thing. This, what I just said, we can server side render content. Okay, with this means that, so when we're loading the page, sometimes you want to load external data, like for example, you have a list and you want to populate a list with some data that it's coming from the main API. Usually when we do it on the Webflow side, we do it on the, on, on the client, on the browser. The user loads the page and then when the page has loaded, we fetch the data and we display that data to the user. But that it's not coming server-side render. That's not coming inside the HTML that, that Webflow returns. But in the case of a reverse proxy, we can use it for that. In the case of a reverse proxy, we can just mutate what's coming from Webflow and inject there the content. And we'll see that today too. So yeah, wow, we'll see too many things today. Okay, let's move on. So we have uh, read and write, for example. Oh, let's, let's see another one. We can do A-B testing, as you mentioned. Um, as uh, Penny, you mentioned. So in here, A-B testing basically means when a user comes to your site, we, you decide to either randomly or under some conditions to display a website or a, some content to the user based on those conditions. With a reverse proxy, you can do that from the server. So the request comes, we decide exactly what to return to the Webflow, um, um, from the Webflow server and then we return to user. So A-B testing, very powerful. I'll have a couple of questions here. I'll answer them in a second. Let's just uh, finish a couple more examples of things that you can build. So you can, for example, implement API endpoints. So imagine that in your domain, you have example.com. It's a Webflow project, but maybe you want to have some API endpoint because you're a backend developer and you want to have that in example.com slash cars, you want to return the data from cars. I don't know. You can implement that because with the reverse proxy, you can always decide exactly what's coming from the server. You can, for example, do server-side analytics. Service analytics, basically imagine that, for example, here in the reverse proxy, every time the user loads some requests, 
you just count the request like request okay this came for the home page this came for the about page this came for the contact page and without having something like google analytics loading on the page you can have analytics on the server here in reverse proxy a couple more things just for example you can read and write http only cookies this is a little bit more advanced but um http only cookies are some cookies that can only be accessed from a server which make them safe when interacting when, when dealing for example with user with user authentication it's just an example so you can do this with a reverse proxy you can do other stuff that's also advanced like csrf tokens <coughs> You can also do other stuff like serving, serving static assets from the domain, from the domain. But uh, all of these examples are just things that are very, very advanced. And this is why I might do two streams or I might do three streams. It depends on how interested is people on us going deep, uh, deeper in the subject. Okay, so for the people who's following with me, um, what we're gonna do is I'm going to just put a folder. In my case, uh, let me, boom, okay. <clears throat> so I have a folder. I'll just open this folder in, in VS Code, in my case. And we can start by installing the tool that we need to create a reverse proxy. Oh, sorry, I, I needed to mention one thing. So. In this tutorial, in this uh, live streams um, sessions that we'll do about reverse proxies, I will be developing using Cloudflare workers. It's not the only tool that you can use, but it's, in my opinion, it's one of the best tools that you can use be because workers have some benefits when it comes to these kind of things. And I'll I'll talk more about them probably on the next stream. Okay, but just so you so so you know. Today, we're developing a Cloudflare worker to create this reverse proxy. So the first thing that you will need is a Cloudflare account. So if you don't have a Cloudflare account, please go ahead to cloudflare.com and create a free account. It's completely free. You don't need to do to pay for anything. Okay. And once you're, you have that Cloudflare account, also you will need, you actually don't need anything else. Okay. So let's just start. I'll start by creating a Cloudflare Worker project, which we have a tool that's called um, Wrangler. Okay, this is a tool from Cloudflare that helps setting up a Webflow project, a Cloudflare Worker project. So this is npx Wrangler in it. This is the command <clears throat> dash y. Okay, and here what I have is a worker setup with everything. It's using TypeScript. But don't be scared because we're not going to do anything related to TypeScript today. It's going to be very simple. So let's wait for a second until everything is installed. Cool. And I will install the dependencies. You can install everything by just typing npm install or pmpm install. This is up to you, whatever tool you use. Okay. And let me see one second if. TypeScript is processing everything correctly. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I have the base here. Everything is just ready for us to start developing, okay? This is essentially just a skeleton project. I actually just, I'll remove this. You don't need to know about this for now. I'll remove all of this and we'll just keep this default function that it's being exported. This function is just a single function that returns a hello world response, okay? And how the way that we can check this for now is <clears throat> by writing either npm start or pmpm start if you're using pmpm. In my case, I use pmpm. And what this is gonna do is it will open a browser. One second, it will open a browser here in local in local host that's running this worker but not only it's running this worker here and it's using cloudflare in the background so we're actually using a workers environment it's very simple um but 
I don't want to confuse you for the people who are not coding. I just want to start doing cool stuff um, to see, okay, what can we do with this, right? Right now, we're just saying, hey, hello world. We're, re we're returning a response with hello world, but that's it, okay? But, okay, so let's start. First thing that we can do with a worker, multiple Waffle projects under a single domain, okay? This is the setup that I mentioned before. We have fintuit.com slash attributes, fintuit.com slash client first, fintuit.com slash whatever, okay? Here, we can do the same in this worker. Let's just take and create one second the URL. We'll say a new URL and the request.url. Okay, this request is essentially telling me the URL that it's being requested. <clears throat> if we console log, just one second, let's console log the URL, the request URL. You know what? Let's not let's not console log it. Let's return it in the response. You will see that if we refresh this, this is the URL that we're getting. Okay, you can see that this is using a workers. And if we go to blah, 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 this is returning this URL. And we go to, I don't know, hey, this is returning this URL. So basically, when we were accessing this request object, we have access to the URL that's coming. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is it, that if it's the first time that you're using Wrangler, you will probably be asked, uh, to log in into Cloudflare. So you will see something like, uh, one second. If I, you will see something like this. It will open this screen. And this screen will ask you for your permission to access your uh, Cloudflare account. Because Wrangler is directly connected to your Cloudflare account. So you can deploy directly the, the worker, you can, you can set environment variables, you can do a lot of things directly from, from VS Code, okay? So if you see that this, um, this screen being open, it's because you have to log in into your Cloudflare account. But moving on, let's just, again, let me spin up again the development server. So the first thing that we want to do is, we have multiple domains and we want to serve those domains based on the URL, okay? Let's say that if I go to website one, I want to show one website, but if I go to slash website two, based on these, these routes, we want to show one project or we want to show another project. So let's pick, I created this, sorry, these two simple projects, it just, two client first clones and I publish them. One it's one it's reverse proxy one dot and the other one it's reverse proxy two wellflow.io. Okay. So we'll say now that we have the URL, we can say if the URL path name is equals to website one we'll just return the, not this fetch, the fetch. We'll just return the contents of the first project. Actually, let's, let's update the project. So this is, this is project one. Let's publish this. And this is project two like this. So we can <laughs> at least distinguish them because otherwise it's going to be the same. So let me refresh this. So this is project one. Perfect. And just one second. Refresh this. This is project two. Okay, great. So here we, we're saying that when we navigate to website one, we want to show the project one. And we, when we navigate to slash website two, we want to show the project two. So let's do it. And in here, when the path name is website one, what we will do is we will display, we will return the contents of the reverse proxy one. And let's just copy this. And when the path name is website two, we will return the contents of reverse proxy two. 
Look at this, how simple it is. We can obviously um, improve this because you don't want your reverse proxy to be a hundred lines of code with eval statements. We can do this better. But for now, for the demo, it's, it's, it's very simple. It's very, very useful. So let's go. Website one. Nothing happened. And maybe I need to refresh this. <clears throat> Sorry, one second. Is this loading? It is, so something it's failing. Ba -ba -bam. URL, path name. Okay, what's going on? Let's console lock this. <clears throat> so we got, we got to do URL path name. Let me console lock URL path name. Just a second. Oh, right, because it has to start with the slash. Sorry, I was missing one thing. So the, the path name, it always starts with this with this slash. So let's do it again. Cool, okay, now it's working. So when we visit web, uh, slash website one, we can see this is project one. When we go to slash website two, we can see project two. Nice, yeah? The only thing that it's, um, if we go back to the, um, to here, what's happening is we're taking this and it's considering <clears throat> is it slash website one and is it slash website two? And when this is being met, when this is happening, in this case, what's happening is that this path, the reverse proxy is fetching from the Webflow server Oh my God, I'm, I'm messing this up. But it's fetching, um, it's fetching the URL from the project one and it's returning it, boom, to the user. And when it's website two, the reverse proxy, it's fetching the URL from the project two and then it's returning it to the user. So this is the first thing that we can do. The reverse proxy, when we visit that reverse proxy, we can decide exactly what we're returning to the user. And in this case is, if it matches this path name, we return this. If it matches this path name, we return this. And if it doesn't met, meet anything else, it's just gonna return. If I type anything else, it's just gonna return, in this case, the request URL. But let's say, hey, like that. And it's gonna return, <coughs> hopefully, hey. So um, on the next stream, it's when I'm going to be going very deep into this to set up multiple domains in the Webflow project, like in pinsuite.com. Okay, but today I want to move on because there are many other things that I want to show from the other examples. Okay, remember that this is just the first example, multiple Webflow projects under a single domain. But we, we can move on and do many other things. Okay, so protect rats from the server. This is one. This was one of the earliest questions that we got, and it was okay. Can I can I use the reverse proxy to protect some some pages from you know unauthenticated users, users who don't have a specific subscription, users who are from a specific country? I don't know. You can do whatever you want. Okay. So in this case, let's just do a quick example. Let's imagine, uh, let's create a route. So let's say that when the path name is uh, protected. Okay, so when we visit slash, slash protected, <clears throat> this is just going to be accessible. I don't know. If you have a cookie that's called user want to username i don't know okay so what we can do is okay if this is slash protected sorry i missed the slash let's check the request cookies not cookies uh pa -pa -pum, pum, pum. i may need to install something to get the cookies uh json single test redirect uh url body uh pa -pum. One second. Let's let's check the documentation. So here in the Cloudflare Workers document, you have a lot of examples. Let's see if there's something about cookies. And if not, I'll just make another example. Yeah, based on cookies. 
So you can see here, for example, we have a lot of, uh, of examples. This is an A-B testing example. So, all oh, right, I need to get the header. So we'll say request headers get the cookie. And if this is the cookies, I will just say that if cookies includes, it's very, this is not how you would do it, but it's just a very quick example. If cookies includes user, we'll just return uh, oops, response. This is a protected asset, whatever. Okay. And if not, we are going to redirect the user back to where it was. So in this case, we'll say a new response. And this is going to be no content at all. We'll just put a status uh, 302, which is a permanent redirect, uh, 301, sorry. It's just a temporary redirect. And we'll add a header of location. And we'll go to the main, which is HTTP this route. So basically, what we're doing here is if the cookies include a user cookie, this is a very bad way of authenticating a user, but it's it's just a raw example. We'll show a protected asset, but if it's not a a user with a cookie, then we'll just redirect back the user. Okay, so let's try it. If we go to protected slash protected slash protected something it's missing here. Give me one second. 10, 10, 10, 10. If path name equals to protected, probably the question mark after cookies. Now, this is just a conditional chaining, but still we have a, an else statement. So it should be fine. Protected. Two, 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 two. So this means that it's not being met. This path name again. Why protected? Oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paris. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. So, okay, you can see that the, the hey, but if you can zoom in, you will see that if I try to access the protected route, <clears throat> this is redirecting me. This is redirecting me to the home page. So, this is why you just see hey. Let's just do another example. Let's just say that and that's not based on cookies. We'll see. We'll we'll do that for another stream. And we'll just say that when it's protected. For now, we'll just redirect of, uh, as we were doing, but we can also return the content. So maybe we can return the content. Let's say. Let's just create a random number. And if random it's bigger than 0.5, we'll return the fetch. And if not, we'll return a new response with null. And this is going to be status of 301. And the headers will be a location to the route, like that. OK, so now we have a 50% probabilities that this is going to work. OK, and 50% probability is that this is redirecting me. OK, so this was to just show that you can protect stuff in the server. OK, moving on. I'm going to show you how we can server-side render stuff. We're using the reverse proxy. OK, so um, let's answer this. And this is for the server-side render content. Right now, we just have what's coming from the designer, right? We have this bit in here with all this content, but imagine that in here, let's just put an empty div and let's put an ID of, I don't know, testing. Can be an ID, can be a, an attribute, it can be a class selector, it can be whatever, okay? But we decide that inside this div block, we want to inject some data from the server. Okay, so let's do that. We have this is the reverse proxy one, and it has an idea of 
testing. So what we can do here with, re, with Cloudflare Workers, it's say, okay, we are in the website one, but before returning the contents of the reverse proxy one project, we're going to take that content, we're going to modify that content. And for example, we could inject data that's coming from a channel. We could inject data that's coming from an API. We can inject some hard-coded data. It doesn't matter. And once we finish doing that, we'll send that to the user. Okay, so let's do it. So first of all, I'm going to store this response. Okay, because before um, returning the response, let's wait this. Before returning this response, we want to do something with it. We want to modify what's inside the response. And one cool thing that we have with Cloudflare Workers, it's what's called H um, HTML Rewriter. So let's go and check the documentation. In the platform here, Cloudflare, Works, uh, Cloudflare Workers documentation, that it's something that it's called, sorry, runtime APIs. It's something that it's called HTML Rewriter. And it's specifically a tool for rewriting the HTML that we just fetched. Okay, and you can see how it works here. The only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this over. Let's put it down here and we can rename this, let's say custom content handler. It doesn't matter. And you can modify elements, you can modify comments, you can modify texts. But in this case, remember that we have a div block. So we want to modify an element. I'll just get rid of this. Okay. And this element, let's just put some types. It's going to be an element. So we're receiving an element and we want to modify that element and return it to the, to the user. So in this case, this element will say it has a bunch of, of methods that you can use. Go ahead and check all the methods here in the documentation in I think it's element handlers, constructor, global types. Give me a second. You can find it in the, in the section of element. You can see that there are some properties and there are some methods. And the method that we want in this case is set inner content. So essentially it's saying, okay, it replaces the content of an element, which is what we want. We want to take that div and we want to populate the insides of the div with some content. So we'll say, okay, set inner content, and uh, let's just put, I don't know, let's put an H2, let's close the H2, and we'll say, hey, this is some server-side render content. Yeah, so essentially this handler is just doing that. It's taking an element and it's replacing the contents of an element with this cool H2 that we just created, okay? So now that we are here in this response, we have to say, okay, new HTML rewriter. And I think that it just on, we'll put the testing because it's saying, okay, when you find an element that has an ID of testing, because it's what we defined in Webflow, if you remember, we'll use this custom content handler. So we'll say new custom content handler. And then we'll use this to transform the response. And we're actually not returning the response. We're returning the transformed response. So we are instantiating HTML rewriter. And when it finds a testing ID, it's just going to process that, num uh, that element with the handler that we just defined and it's going to transform the response and return it, okay? So let's try it. Let's visit slash website one and see if this works. Yes, it did. Actually, it was some text. So this H2, probably it's not saying set inner content, but said, huh, I thought that you could inject the HTML. That's probably another uh, thing, but you can see that we are injecting the text that we just defined. So remember that in Webflow, we just have an empty block, an FTD block, but here in what we're getting from the reverse proxy, it's a filled diff block. But not only that, so don't, don't be confused. This is not being filled 
in the client with JavaScript. This is actually coming from the server. So if we inspect the, the HTML that's coming here, and let me just wrap the lines because I have a lot of zoom. You can see that the empty div is coming populated with what we added inside. So basically you can use this to inject whatever you want. You can inject the data that you fetched um, from Jano. So imagine that here before calling this, you call Shano, you call the database, and then you will write the, the response with your data. Or imagine that you want to do A-B testing. So maybe sometimes you want to show a piece of content with some text, and sometimes you want to change that text. Or mm, for the entire page is A-B testing, it will basically just be uh, redirecting people based on the route. So you can see, you, I hope that you can uh, see the benefits that we can get from this. If we go back here, this is a reverse proxy, which is the client attempts to get the data from a server, but before returning the data from the server, the reverse proxy intercepts that. Sorry, before, before reaching the server, sorry. The client tries to access the server, but before reaching the server, the reverse proxy intercepts that and decides what to do with that request and what to respond, okay? But in the case of a forward proxy, which would be the other way around, right? What, we, what happens is that the client is trying to make a request to the server, but before... So instead of having this sitting in front of the server, we have this sitting in front of the client. So it would be the other way around. Here, the reverse proxy, it's, it's not even allowing the request to go, to go out. So before being able to send that request from the client, the, not the reverse proxy, sorry, the forward. Uh, this forward proxy is intercepting that request Okay, and this is, for example, when you when you go to a government office or maybe in your high school or in your work office and you have some firewalls in place, like some protection that doesn't allow you to access uh, certain sites, that's a forward proxy that's saying, okay, hey, you're trying to send a request to, I don't know, a bad site, let's call it that. I don't want to say names. Um, but because the forward proxy detects that it, it's you're trying to access that it doesn't allow the request to even go to, to to leave the client, so it's it's like this barrier that it's that it's intercepting everything that's um going out from the client, as opposite here that it's intercepting everything that it's going out from the server. That's why it's called it's called reverse proxy because it goes the the other way around. Can we also inject styles and H two heading structure instead of just using text? Yes, Starshield, you can. I didn't manage to do it, but... Oh, right. Content options. I probably missed these content options. Let me try one second. So in here, in here, we're replacing this, but I'm missing some content options. Oh, here was the option. So I was missing to define that this was HTML and not text. And probably now, when we go to website one, yes, cool. Yeah, so basically you have to specify that the content that you're injecting is HTML. Before I was not specifying it, and this is why, if I set this to false, this is why this is being showed as a string because it, it just, um, <clears throat> it just um, what's it called uh, escapes the the HTML the HTML syntax. But if you set it to true, then you have some HTML in place. Cool. Thank everyone uh, for being here. This was the first session of the reverse proxy. On the next session, we're gonna be setting up an official reverse proxy setup in Webflow, where we'll be able to have multiple projects under a single domain. If you want to be live in that 
in in these streams make sure that you subscribe to fincit plus because we're doing these lives for fincit plus and if not you can always wait and see that in youtube a few days after so again thank you everyone for being here we'll see you in the next friday Bye.